Good morning. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope you are having a fantastic weekend. It's been a very busy weekend for me this weekend. It's hovering around freezing here in Terrace, British Columbia. I think it's raining. I'm not sure. I can't quite tell. But uh, it's going to be snowing here soon. Tis the season. It's been a very wet, wet, wet fall this year. So yeah, thanks for tuning in. It is greatly appreciated that uh, you're taking the time out of your day to watch or listen. And yeah, let me know if you do have any questions or comments. I am always happy to answer, uh, regardless of which video that you're watching or how old it is. I will always answer the comments and questions. So thanks for doing that. Uh, if you have more detailed comments and questions and you're watching this on YouTube, you can look in the description below. There is a link to the Discord. I am there pretty much all the time. So if you did have something you wanted to discuss, that's a really good place also to have that conversation. Uh, otherwise, let's, a huge thank you to the subscribers on Twitch and a huge thank you to the Patreons. It really does help. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you like this type of content, please consider giving it a like and subscribe. Obviously, that does help the channel, so thank you for that. Otherwise, let's get into what's new and what we're working on. Uh, Petri, aka Crossroads, he is still working on the Lua development for <clears throat> basically a new Make Lua file so that you, the users, when you're building a scenario, will have an opportunity to create a Lua file for your game or for, for your scenario, sorry, that will be mostly automated and then you can just go in and tweak certain companies or whatever you want after the fact. He's building the logic right now for that and he did mention today that maybe in a couple of weeks he'll have something for me to show in more detail. So that's, that's kind of exciting. Um, hey, John. Good to hear you. Hope you're doing well today, or see you. Happy thoughts, right? Me, I have been focusing on the Six Nations and building their order of battles. Uh, this couple of, uh, or since the last session, basically what I have finished is the surface-to-air missiles and the guns self-propelled you know anti-aircraft weapons which is kind of good basically making sure that they all have graphics and weapon values assigned i've started to work on the reconnaissance vehicles which is kind of exciting uh hey nakaway good to see you especially for the new iraq because they have a whack load of various recon vehicles which is kind of exciting that uh I have to uh, create some of these things because we've never used them in the games before. So, for example, these EE9s, they need to be created. The EE3s, they're like, these. both of these things are Brazilian vehicles that were offered to Iraq during the war. So, yeah, there's some new graphics that need to be done, which is, which is kind of exciting, and I'll get to that eventually. Uh, the OT65s, even though it's... I could just use the uh, BDRM or BRDM... Uh, one graphics, but it's a little different, so I will have to do some tweaks on that. Uh, otherwise, yeah, we have a lot of good things coming. Uh, I am making relatively good progress. I'm still going to say the end of November by the time I have all this done, because there's a lot to do here. Um, I also finished all the missile launchers and rocket propels, as well as the artillery. That's all done now, so... I'm slowly working down these platoon files to assign graphics and to assign weapons. Hey, Stipe, good to see you. Heck yeah. <laughs> You're in for a treat today there, Stipe, because I have a whole bunch of helicopters to kill. Uh, yeah, so we are making progress. It is slow, uh, but I am getting there. Uh, next, I'll be working on the reconnaissance vehicles. Follow following that, I'll be working on the APCs, uh, both wheeled and tracked. And then after that, the trucks. And then after that, we start getting into uh, all the engineering vehicles. And then after that, we get into 
the heavy weapons, the anti-tank, the anti, or the mortars, artillery, and anti-aircraft guns. Then the infantry, then the headquarters and leaders, then the helicopters, and finally the all the airplanes. Most of those, again, at this point, I'm just assigning graphics and weapon files so that we have something to play with and build scenarios from. And again, I'm working on from top to the bottom. We have the Czechs, we have the Soviets, we have the North Koreans, we have the Poles, we have the brand new Iraq. This is a huge upgrade for Iraq and finally Iran. So yeah, we're, we're getting there slowly, but surely. And here. We are playing an Operation Lam Son 719 scenario. This is the first one. Now, as noted before, this isn't scripted, so we are just trying to see what the potential is going to be for scripting this later on and how it's playing out. Uh, this is one massive airborne operation using a whole bunch of American helicopters to transport Arvind units all around the map. As you can see, it's a fairly large map and we are scattered everywhere trying to do that. We do have an armored component here in the center, which we are pushing, and we're going to hopefully be cleaning up some of these uh, NVA troops. Scenario one for the Lamps On campaign. This is done by David Gulster. I will have to revise it, obviously, when I do the scripting. But as a first go, we're seeing how it, how it plays out. Thank you all for tuning in today. That's really good to see you. Positive vibes, eh? All right, starting the south. And I think we've pretty much done everything last session. So one thing that we're going to fix is this. As you can see, we have a whack load of helicopters all landed in this zone. So one thing that Petri's going to be doing come November is doing some bug fixes and I think this is a, a massive bug in the sense that we shouldn't be able to land the entire helicopter fleet in this location. So it will be, you will put limitations on these type of situations. We'll probably go into detail later, but at least it'll be however many helicopters can land there will be based on the strength point limit, which if I recall correctly is 24. 24 strength points in a particular hex, that'll be the limit. But that might be modified. Uh, we'll have to see how that goes. But right now I have just way more than 24 helicopters there, so that's not cool. Uh, otherwise, we are advancing towards this objective here, Hill 546. There are a bunch of points back here. We are starting to take out supplies and things, and that will increase our, our point totals significantly. I am using the 1.4 beta. Those numbers will go down real soon. Yes, I know, I know. That's why I think you'll appreciate this scenario there, uh, Stipe, because I will, I will be losing helicopters, as I did last time. Let's take a look at the stats, see how many I've lost so far. So, yeah, anyways, I'm using the 1.4 beta. This will be released in January. One of the things that I need to do is finish all those countries before we release it because um, that's part of the whole upgrade is that you get some new nations to play with and some new toys. Uh, we have lost 13 helicopters so far. Let's see what this, what, what have we lost? Can I make this bigger? No. Strengths lost, so I've lost uh, four, five, four Cobras. Is that it? Oh, what else? And one Loach. Oh, and four Kiowas. That's not good. More Napalm and White Phosphorus in the next version. Yeah, that'd be good, right? For sure. All right, here we've, we have our helicopters on station. 
we're good there. Again, I'm just going through. So uh, this is the default graphics for 1.4, fair warning. The other graphics will be included, but as a mod, as the whole games, we're all going into this direction because one, it gives it a new, fre a new fresh look and kind of upstates it a bit. And these graphics, I think, they, they look really nice. I think they, they, they look really good. Uh, what else? We're just cruising around, making sure that we got everything. Our smoke ship. We have some reconnaissance. We have our rangers on the ground. was doing oh yeah this base was being attacked but i think we have it all under control at least for now this is where i've taken some of the losses because uh i didn't see the enemy until it was too late and then our armored column we're all good so yeah i think we're done here for the end of the turn let's end the turn see what happens Uh, John, we have the same issue with reinforcements being stacked on entry hex for one turn. Way more than... Yeah, but nothing we can really do about that. And we're taking losses by anti-aircraft guns. Gosh darn it. is good. I did do some revisions to quite a few of the units that I've been working on lately, which means I'll have to update those units and the other nations just to make sure that there's there's some consistency. Effect is good. I was going through my files and someone had, I don't remember that gentleman's name, but I know the initials are JF. And this gentleman had given me a, a platoon file that had a significant number of British units to incorporate into the UK nation. That's one thing I'll probably do for like 1.41 or something. Uh, but yeah, it's a good list and there's a whole bunch of stuff in there. It does require a whole bunch of new graphics. So I'm going to save that for later because I'm working on six nations at a time right now. But for Cold War, I think it'll be very important to incorporate his changes because a lot of those units were in in Europe as part of the uh, British Army of the Rhine. So that'll be kind of that'll be kind of cool to update those type of the units. At one point, I had updated and made proper divisions and brigades and regiments and all that fun stuff for the UK. But for the life of me, I can't find them. I've looked everywhere. So I'm going to have to rebuild those eventually. But I'll do that again for Cold War. Like I made all the, all the territorial divisions and everything. It was insane how much work I put into that. But no, I can't find it. And it's driving me crazy. A lot of NVA troops back here. 
but I'm thinking that we're kind of lucky just in the sense that since they are pretty far away, I don't think that we're going to going to actually engage them. So for Cold War, the only two nations I haven't built yet are East and West Germany. Uh, Austria will come later as like an add-on, much like we're doing with Iran to Middle East. Uh, but the core game, the core nations for Cold War, I would really, really like to have as for NATO, uh, obviously West Germany, France, UK, and the US. That'll be the core starting nations for Cold War, for NATO. And then for the Warsaw Pact, it'll be uh, the Soviets, Poland, Czechoslovakia, and East Germany. And then any other nations will be added on in the future. But at least to start, I'd like to have those eight nations within the Cold War game. Now on the bright side, the US is mostly done. France is mostly done. The UK needs a refresh. Um, the West Germans are, they need to be built. I haven't even started them. Same with the East Germans. I haven't even started them. The Poles are done, except for the platoon files and assigning of those of those units. The Czechs are done, except for the platoon files and the assigning of those units. The Soviets are done, except for the assigning of the units and the platoon files, obviously. But my goal is to have at least Poland, Czechoslovakia, and the Soviets done by the end of November with all the new, new graphics and stuff like that so that they have something to play with to start building scenarios. Um, I'll work probably on West and East Germany next year when I have some time. Probably during the Christmas break, I'll try and build, you know, um, for example, I'd like to build the master map for the Basra area, down into Kuwait, up into like Desvul, that type of area. But we'll see how that goes. Because uh, I'd like to include a new master map in, inside of the Middle East update, since we're going to include a new Iraq and a brand new Iran. So for those that want to build some Cold War scenarios, they'll have a, a map to start with at least, right? That, that's the idea. So yeah, my plans are trying to get all the Order of Battle stuff done for the updates come November, the end of November, because it'll take that long. And then December, I'm going to spend basically that entire month just working on that map and try and get that done so that there's something that people can play with. And then next year we'll be heavily focused on Cold War and everything Cold War. That's the plan. If you have other ideas, let me know. As in regards to scripting, we are really hoping that uh, with Petri's new efforts on the Make Lua 2 script, um, a lot, if not all, of the scenarios that do not have a script right now will have something that's relatively functional. So that means, fingers crossed, for the 2.4 for Middle East, all of the scenarios will have at least a, a Lua file to make the AI relatively competent. Is it going to be awesome? No. Is it going to be good? Maybe. I think so. Depending on how, you know, Petri dives in and, and makes the AI logic half, half decent. We won't know that until we figure out what the heck's going on and how, what the capabilities are of that and whatnot. But the plan is to at least for 2.4 Middle East and 1.4 Vietnam, there are a whole bunch of scenarios in the background that 
don't have scripting yet, that would be nice to have something so you guys can play them. For example, the Huey scenario. For example, this scenario here that we're playing now. There's a whole bunch of things that it'd be nice to get you guys playing it, and then I can go back to it eventually, updating the, you know, individual companies, or adding the event point things, or th little things like that to make it more interesting. Um, yeah, so that's, we have, we have lots of plans, I just need more time in a day, that's the biggest thing. 35 airstrikes remaining, I haven't even used any airstrikes because I don't think I need them, I have so many gunships, it's, it's mental. Uh, three out of four units have recovered morale, which is good. Four headquarters unable to provide supply, four artillery units unavailable, and three units low on ammo. And then other nations like Hungary and Austria and, you know, the other Cold War nations and other, like, Canada. Like, I, I really want to build Canada. I just... It's not a priority. So, those type of nations will come later on and much as we're doing with Middle East, the nations will just be added to the core game. That's the idea. And that's kind of how we're going to also work on the World War II version as well. Um, we're going to, as Petri basically said, we're going to eat the elephant with a spoon. We'll get there, but we'll just do it in smaller pieces. So... Again, the World War II version will encompass eventually all the theaters. Instead of having three more separate games, we're just going to do it in one game. You'll have a core game probably with like Germany and Russia and Finland because I think the Finland the Finns are done. Um, little things like that to to start off the game, and then we'll add nations as we can, or as I build them. Alright, what are we doing here? Oh yeah, we're going, we're going to go hunting for anti-aircraft guns. Excellent. Uh, I have mortars here, they're okay. And we got disrupted. Let's bring over some eyes. Elephant eating, there goes my appetite. <laughs> That's a good one, Stipe. Let's do a recon. Ooh, we spotted some mortars. Let's do another recon. Uh, we spotted another platoon. And I think we have enough for another one. Let's do that. So we know we know there's an RPG or there's a recordless rifle in there. We just we weren't able to spot it. That's okay. It happens. Let's uh, do some reconnaissance back here. We spotted a machine gun. No joy. No joy. Okay, I'm gonna pull back. So these Kiowas, they're, they don't have as, as high a defense as the Loaches, so they still can get shot down more likely, and that's why we've lost four of them already, unlike the, uh, the, the Loaches, where we've only lost just one so far. Let's zoom out a little bit, see what our situation is here. Do I have anything that can reach that hex? Because that's a good target hex for artillery. I don't think our 155s can reach that far. The 105s definitely cannot. Securing the hills. Uh, let's advance south. Oh, I can't. There's a river there. Gosh darn it. 
I like the slopes. Let's bring our gunships over. Reduced it by one. Another reduction by one. So these are too low, too high. So actually, I should have been attacking these at one. Oh no, two hexes. Right. So the main difference between these ones and the other ones is that these ones attack at 63, and the 4H ones, I believe they attack at 80 something. Yeah, they attack at 85. So these are larger rockets on these ones. Uh, we can pull back. If you look carefully too, you can see that these ones here have four heavy pods and these ones here have two heavy pods in the middle and then the, on the outside they're lighter pods. You have to really pay attention or really, really look. But you can tell the difference if you look at these helicopters. And in the front, also, if you really, really look carefully, you can tell that these ones are armed with... They're not armed with the Gatling, but they're actually armed with grenade launchers in the front. Something to keep in mind. I spent... I spent... like Oh, I can even show you. Many, 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 many moons ago. I spent a lot of time So here's a, a 67 version of the Cobra. It's an early version. And then there's another version. This has the four heavy rockets. This has the two low, two high. Also 68. 68. This has the four, four heavy rockets with a turret. This is the 69 version. It has a Gatling. And there's a one heavy, two rockets, and a Gatling. So the Gatling is armed on the side, not on the front on this version. 71 here. This has two low, two high rockets plus a turret. This has four heavy rockets, 1971 version with a turret. This version has tow plus rockets. So you can see there's tow launchers on here plus the rockets for 75. Uh, this has eight tow. So this is just ready for anti-tank capabilities. Uh, and this has four tow plus two heavy rockets. And this also has eight tow. This is a AH-1S, uh, also an AH-1S, but different weapons package. And this has eight tow for 77. This has a large gun on it, uh, up gun plus tow plus rockets. And plus this is the same, except it has eight tow. And this has the large gun plus two low, two high rockets. And this has uh, two or a little uh, four tow, two heavy rockets. So there are different variations of the, the helicopter that you'll probably see once we get to the Cold War. A lot of effort there. Uh, those elevation hills look different. Not yeah. So this is using the the latest mod. Actually, it's. These are now standard graphics, uh, but they're from Bill. He's been working really hard on these, and the hills, he is improving them, so you can see that there are some slopes. If you want to have more information, you can still have the contours like this, and this kind of tells you where everything is. Yeah, I, I like the new graphics. I think they look really, they look really slick, and he's been updating these pretty much every week. Uh, I haven't grabbed the latest package quite yet, it is, it is turning out to be really nice, though. Let's turn those off. All right, what are we doing? 
And he also added these slope graphics too. So it really helps understand where the, the contours are. I, I kind of like them. So that the light here and the dark here just to help identify where the various slopes are without resorting to turning on the contours. And of course, if you do want to use the contours, you can adjust the, the width of the contours. Uh, you can change the color. You can also change the width if you want to have them thicker. Or if you want to have them thinner, you can also do that really thin like they're super thin now contour oops contours three so really thick and you can even change the color if you want light which in this elevation it's harder to see obviously uh, colors medium so they're there but not as prominent and then this is the dark uh, if I'm going to use contours, I'll probably use them as dark because as a map guy, they're typically dark anyways. But yeah, I find that I don't really need to use them with this because you can kind of tell where everything is so far anyways. We'll have to see. There's so many options in this. You can really set it up however you want to for your visual needs, which is, which is nice. All right. Uh, let's take out some of these things. I do have to watch my fuel. Uh, let's see. Alright. We did do a massive landing here last session. Let's advance north. Ah, crap, we found some artillery. I don't know where it went, though. Oh, there it is. Is that it? Nope. Oh, yeah. Ah, oh, is there a river there? Yes. Is there a crossing anywhere? There is not. If they run out of juice, they can at least auto-rotate down to land. As opposed to getting shot down. <laughs> but where's the fun in that? Let's do a recon. Oh, we found a machine gun. Lots of bad guys here. But we do have some 4.2 inch mortars. Let's start softening these guys up. Oh, shit. I didn't mean to do that. I meant to fire. Well, at least we... What do we do? Reduce it? Yeah, we reduced it. So let's get a little bit closer. There we go. I almost feel bad for having so many helicopters that are pretty amazing. Ah, can't fire more. We did reduce that significantly, though. Oh, yes, we're going hunting. Ah, frick, really? One thing I have to get used to is identifying, like, I mean, it's pretty obvious that's a river, but it's hard to know what kind of river it is. Like, let's find... So here, here we go. So this is the main difference. Ah, okay. So if I can see that there's shrubbery, then it's not that bad of a river. But if it's a prominent one like this, that means we can't cross it. So we have to look for a crossing. All right, so now I understand the main difference here. So these we can cross without issue. These we cannot. Okay. That's simple.
Oh, nice. Got rid of some anti-aircraft guns. So how's things there, Stipe? What's new and exciting? Since there's a landing zone here, I think we'll probably end up picking up these helicopters again. Or sorry, that company. And moving it where we need it, maybe down into here. Ah. Crap. Oh, not too much new. Same old. So since I was in the wrong tab, I meant to uh, conduct an assault, but I ended up assaulting with both of these, but canceling it, so they lost all their action points. That sucked. So yeah, if you do cancel an assault, you will lose your action points for that assault. Basically, that is to represent everyone getting organized for the assault, preparing for it, and then just being called down. So they did something, but they didn't do what you wanted to because it was canceled. Uh, here we have a whole bunch of supplies. Huey. I think we might take them back here. And drop down. Start refueling. These are all refueled, which is good. Actually, we, we can take some of these... Bada boom, get them up in the sky. Now we're going to go back up to here. To grab that full company. We don't need to protect it, I don't think. I'm going to go to the high ground, do a recon, see if we can see something. Oh, bad guys. On the bright side, they're on the other side of a river, so we should be safe there. guys out in the open. There's a whole bunch of guys back there. Okay, so we need to pull these helicopters back. We spotted something there. We need to run away. Oh, Stipe, look at this. How cool is this? We have our AC-130. it but not enough I need to change the graphics for that because the perspective is all buggered let's get a little bit closer with big red Oh, 
wrong one. Closer. Oh. Not sad. So here we did lose one of our our cobras. So I did pull them back. Just to be safe. Uh, here we have our helicopters. They are refueled. Let's get them off the ground in case there's going to be some mortars coming. And let's fly. Where are we going to fly? We can fly over here. And we'll prepare to pick up that company. And drop them off here. Can we drop them off? That is a landing zone, so yeah, we can. We're doing a lot of uh, hop, skipping, and jumping to do this. Securing our flank there. I think we're all secured here. There's our other Cobra that got damaged. Okay, that's that. That's all good. Let's Shooting fish in a barrel. Significantly reduce those. Man, I would not want to be the NVA in this instant instance. Sorry. do some more recon, make sure that we spotted everything, which I think we have. Just doing some recon. Yeah, so we've spotted everything that there is there, so that's good to know. But we do have our armored cavalry coming. Too excited. Say end of November for the up. No, it is January. 
uh, end of November for me to finish the platoon files that I'm working on because it's it's a lot of work. So the platoon files that I'm trying to finish is for the following nations. Poland, Czechoslovakia, the Soviets, North Korea, Iran, and Iraq. And obviously Iran and Iraq will go into the Middle East update. And North Korea will go into the Vietnam update. I have a supply truck here, so I will be able to use this this abandoned airfield for a resupply for the helicopters, which is good timing. For the month of December, I will probably be spending that one doing some debugging for the organizations that I had created for all those nations, making sure that they all are functional, and then finally I will be uh, working on the master map to be included in Middle East for the Basra area for those that want to make scenarios that deal with... Um, the Iran-Iraq war. And eventually I will I will be doing the same thing because I'm quite fascinated by that whole engagement and whatnot, so I will be definitely taking the time to do that. Oh no, these guys need to land. Why are they at two but green? That's interesting. So I'm landing there. Waiting for some resupply. That's taken care of that down here. Let's continue our advance. Ah, and then I misclick because I'm not very smart. Arvin. That's one other thing that I had have done is uh, I have updated all the movement and whatnot for like loading and unloading and, and all that good stuff for all the nations to make sure that they're more consistent. Here we have a whole bunch of stuff. Some helicopters up in the sky. As you can see, I had the entire Air Force here. <laughs> That's insane. It's a crazy. Oh, there's a path down there. So let's let's go down there. Now I don't remember if these are occupied, so I will wait. Do I have any more loaches? Oh, I do. Oh, I have a Kiowa. Ah. 
I'm going to see if that is... Oh, I don't have... I don't have any infantry. Let's send these guys north. I think we might have to do this the old-fashioned way and just walk over there. Because I don't think... Yeah, I don't think that... Uh, well, we might get lucky. Let's let's go over there with these guys. We'll send the, the Kaio over here to see if these are protected. And if they are, then we won't assault. But if they are not, then we'll just land here with uh, our heavy weapons. And see if we can hang on to that hill and maybe work our way across. Oh no, there's a river there. Gosh darn it. There's a river there. So I might have to uh, hop on both sides. But that might be protected because it is a 150 point. There's another point back there that's in the middle of nowhere. Oh, I have more infantry. Here we go. This is good. Oh, they need to land. Why can't they land there? Is that not a landing zone? Nope, that's not a landing zone. Oh, they need to land. It's overstacked. Son of a... So this is milking the system which won't be allowed in the future, just FYI. So all these are going to be refueled next turn, even though we don't really need them to be, oh, except these guys won't. Load them up. Do I have another... I do have a headquarters. So we'll move these guys over here. And then all our helicopters here will be refueled at the same time. That's a good thing. And I think that's all we can do. Oh, we have a whole bunch of stuff back there. Do I have any guns that'll hit that? I don't think I do. Oh, yes. The 107s can. The 110s can't. Okay. Let's save that. End it. One helicopter. Missed. Oh, I lost two more. Fuck. Gosh darn it. Didn't see it there. That's annoying. On the bright side, we took out two of those guns.
So what's the status of my games? Uh, so far I have... I'm restarting the game with Troy, which I'll get to probably later today. Hell's Highway. Uh, we are turn 38, I think. And I have abandoned the east side of Arnhem because I'm getting throttled up north. Those SS troops are brutal, plus all that artillery. There's nothing I can do to hang on to that. So I've just decided to say no, cut my losses, and run away. Uh, my tanks... I have some fireflies that have now reached the town to the southeast of Nijmegen, and we did draw some Panzer IV blood. That made me feel kind of nice. Uh, there's a big attack going on at best at this turn, so I am counterattacking. Uh, I do have some mobile support there. I have a few operations around that area to, one, clear, clear the fang, flanks, clear the woods, and see what I can find and hopefully eliminate. Because I, I think that's going to be a full division that's coming on there, so I really want to make sure that I have the forces to take that out. Ah, oh, we lost another freaking helicopter. Sorry, here I am babbling and not paying attention. Uh, to the east in Hell's Highway, haven't run into a lot, and it, it's kind of nerve-wracking. In the southeast, though, I finally cleared that major wood. And now I'm working on taking out the rest of whatever I can find. I am really trying hard to advance there, but he's set up another ambush, which I need to deal with. Which is a pain in the rear. Um, what else is going on? I have a turn with Bill, which is a Vietnam game. We're scrapping in the mountains, and man, my Chinese troops are crappy. Which is... Unfortunate, but that's how it goes. Uh, the other Vietnam game I have is with Kevin, which is the Force of Assassin. That is... It's, uh, it's a tough one for the Arvin, but it's a fun one. I, I don't mind it. The Objective Kharkov that I have going with Tim, uh, he's clearly going to win that one, but I am... I, last turn, I had a really good turn for some strange reason. It was, I even managed to surround a company and, and take it out. But, you know, in the long run, I'm totally going to lose that scenario. I am trying to do some counterattacks, but yeah, it's not going well. Because it's the Russians in that particular scenario, they're not very strong. I have some tanks, but again, they're not very effective because it's muddy. If it wasn't muddy, it would really change the dynamic of this, the whole situation. But... Historically, it was muddy, so muddy it is. So I can't, I can't do the fancy moves that I like doing usually, which kind of sucks. Otherwise, it's good to have these games going. It uh, may, makes me really want to work on the World War II stuff, and I'm eager to do that after we get the Cold War stuff done. And it's given me a lot of ideas for what kind of scenarios that are fun to play for the uh, for the Cold War, right? So that's kind of fun. Yeah, the he the high helicopters are not having a good day today. On the bright side, we don't have to worry about... Just seeing what's going on, sorry. Uh, we don't have to worry about any uh, reminders of helicopters crashing because we don't they don't leave a wreck. <laughs> Yay! Oh, they're flanking us, the buggers.
man, there's a lot of MDA troops. Lots of targets for us. Our armored unit here will have a lot of fun trying to deal with this. We have a lot of bristling machine guns on those ACAVs. I guess I could call in a massive airstrike on that. Holy crap. Holy crap. So that's almost a full battalion of troops here. I was not expecting that. Yeah, I think. We'll see how it goes. We have, what, 35 airstrikes? The key is that I have to make sure that I have the helicopters there with line of sight and enough fuel, because obviously the airstrikes don't come all in one turn, right? They space it out. So I need to make sure my helicopters have enough fuel. Right side, these are out in the open. 35 air strikes remaining. We have two out of five units that have recovered morale. Five headquarters unable to provide supply. Four artillery units unavailable. We have uh, three units low on ammo. And we have 17 helicopters low on fuel. Ah, so that reminds me. I did mention last time to, to Petri that it would be nice potentially to have a button that tells me where these helicopters are that are low on fuel. But he said that instead of doing that, instead of adding a new button, what he was thinking about doing is that when you highlight the helicopters, it might be a different color for those that are going to be low on fuel. So that might be a, a simple but very effective solution for, for that issue. Ooh, that was a good hit. Artillery on an overstacked hex. Very nice. Perfect. All right, now we did see a problem. We have a whole bunch of bad guys here. But I want to take out these guns. Maybe he should make a special streaming mod for you to prevent them from getting shot down. <laughs> ah, but come on. Where's the fun in that? And plus, if I wasn't getting shot down, you, you wouldn't have anything to make fun of me for. Well, I mean, besides my play in general, but that's different. Okay, so obviously we have... Uh, what the hell? Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, that's what I was going to do. I was going to check. These are SA-7s. And I was going to read up on that, but I forgot to do that. Do I have a book? I think I have books on this. I have to double check. But I wanted to make sure that there was actually SA-7s at this time in Laos. Someone mentioned on the, on YouTube that, yeah, there was SA, SA-2s and SA, I think even SA-3s, but yeah, since the 65s. But I'm, I'm mostly talking about these 
shoulder fired missile systems. I know they were in 72 for sure, 100%. I just don't remember if they were here. I, I'll have to read up on that. I'm curious, very curious. Coreless rifle. Or was that the RPG? Huh. Okay. I'm going to turn off the map labels because we don't need them. And it's just slowing things down. I think I'm going to need some reinforcements back here. Oh no. helicopter. We'll have to send them back to get refueled. These need to go get refueled. Where can we go? Where can we go? Ah, I can go here. Drop down. Drop down. They're good. These need to refuel. Now this helicopter here is no longer viable, so we need to send that somewhere else. Which is terrible. need to grab another helicopter that we have. Can't load them up. Okay, let's take out this. Ah, shoot. Didn't take it out. Oh, there we go. Okay. So that being said, we can now send our helicopters back over here as well. And we can pick up some infantry. those guys back up, bring them where we need them. Oh, we got lucky. So yeah, this is this is what I mean. We shouldn't be able to land all this stuff here. This is mental. Oh, I can't even cross there. Gosh darn it. Get these guys on the ground. We can load these guys up. Load these guys up. And we'll wait for those guys so we have a, a full company. Recon assets there. Let's 
Almost, almost reduced. Ah, gosh darn it. Ah, we got him. Perfect. So that secures this area. So again, we can bring our helicopters back. Actually, no, that's a 200 pointer. So we might just leave them there. Okay, so here, let's just check. Do our loaches have time? Yeah, so let's call in some airstrikes. Oh, we have B-52s. <gasps> oh, well, that's exciting. Let's bring in a couple B-52s to see what happens. Okay, let's, let's see what happens. I'm very curious. I didn't even check to see. Just need to land. So our A cabs can cross, but our tanks need to go to the bridge. a lot of really cool armored toys to use here. It's interesting that this flamethrower is a lot slower than the other ones. I wonder, wonder if that's accurate. So I did have to modify this map. Um, this road back here was a was terrible, so I did update it to make it a little more useful. So that, that's why all this stuff is still way far behind, because for the first six turns I was literally moving one hex at a time, and that didn't make any sense. So I did update it. Oh, I'm really curious to see if those be... Uh, B-52s come in next turn. Oh, 
this needs to land. Fire truck. I hit that? Oh, I can't. Take some of your own medicine with a recordless rifle. Where's the effective range? Oh, right up close and personal. Okay. Oh, well, we reduced it by two. Thank you, AC-130. I really appreciate that. Nice. Start probing, see if we can see anything. Oh, there they are. Spotted. Perfect. Do some recon with the loach. Nothing. Nothing. Oh! Spawning some sappers. in there too. Crap. Holy crap, there's a lot more in there than I thought. Let's see if we can slide down here and take out those mortars.
Nope. Got him. care of this. These guys are still not happy. We can land them here, though, I think. Yes. Uh, they're okay still. They're okay. That's all done. These guys can come land up here. Here we have some support. Oh, there's a gun here somewhere. I don't remember where it was. Crap. Sounds like Berta left us in good shape with the CSE and Lua files. If Petri can line up a few more things, we should be golden. Oh yeah, he's doing, Petri's doing miraculous things. It's, it's very exciting. Absolutely. Let's go in with our machine guns first. If he can figure out a way to, to make the Lua files automatically. Oh, sugar. That really changes the whole, the whole game completely. It's a whole new world. That's okay. It, it yeah. If he could do that and have a really decent, or relatively decent, you know, experience with generating Lua files for us, that yeah, total game changer, hundred percent game changer. Maybe not as a final, but at least as a really good temporary nothing okay so we secure that that's that was a nice surprise let's move these guys out of the way because as I mentioned before we do have a lot of scenarios in the background that most of you those good looks pretty similar so you should be able to just coordinates enter coordinates and units and attack option. Yeah, so even better, Petri's figuring out a way to do that, you know, automatically, which will make, based on the mission types, because um, in the scenario design stage, you're going to be setting mission types, and then based on those mission types, he's trying to develop some generalized scripting for the AI to attack in a logical or defend in a logical way. Uh, is, is it going to be perfect? No. I mean, you can still have the option of going in afterwards and tweaking certain things, which is something that I probably will do for most of my scenarios. But yeah, uh, in general, a lot of the stuff is very similar. The, the key is just making sure that the logic behind it is, is accurate, right? That's the thing, is making sure the logic is making sure. So if I, if I have a NVA company and this is a priority hill, or this is a priority hill, you know, I want to make sure that the AI is is attacking either one of those hills when it needs to, or is defending it, or how it's going to defend it, or the position that it's going to be defending around it. Lots of little things like that, I think, are really important. 
But yeah, generally speaking, it's it's relatively straightforward and simple to do. It's just time consuming. And if anyone knows me, everyone knows that nearly everything I do is time consuming. is exciting. I'm super stoked about this potential. It will be like, I, yeah, literally it will be game changing for the campaign series and the potential. Especially since since it is a literally make Lewis 2 script, you can do that. You can build a scenario and you'll be able to run that function and it'll generate a Lua file for you. Which is awesome. That's huge. enough. Not enough. Do some recon back here. See what's popping up. Not too much. That would be huge. That would be huge too with armor combat and cold war. Yeah, absolutely. Machine gun first. Nice. Get the RPGs. And then we'll come back after. Let's fly over here, see what's here. Recon. 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 Well, there's not much back there. There's a recon element there. Armor combat is a different animal. Yes, it will be... Not even just the tank. The tank combat you can kind of figure out. It's the mechanized component. The mechanized infantry component of armor combat. That's going to be the biggest challenge. And the support weapons. Because it's a whole new world, right? It's easy to do the infantry. It's a different ball game completely to do uh, to do infantry or tanks and mechanized infantry that's a whole new world I mean I tried doing it before with uh, with that what, what was that scenario called? That Syrian versus Jordan. Uh, Ramla. That's a massive scenario that is all mechanized infantry. And it turned out okay. But it, it still needs a lot of work. Because there's right now there's definite limitations about what you can do for the AI. I just noticed that that needs to be fixed. Okay, I think we're pretty much good to go. So let's see if we can figure out how these B-52s work. Black September Intruders. Yeah, exactly. That's the one. That was a preliminary adventure into scripting mechanized formations because that's all mechanized, right? It's all infantry and tanks and artillery and things. So, And trying to make it interesting. So obviously it has limitations. So I will have to revisit that eventually to see how effective I can make it. I like these larger scenarios in the sense that there's actions happening in different places all over the map and you have to kind of remember what's going on. 
I enjoy that. That's why I like playing the bigger scenarios, because it's not just one little battle that you're working on. It's a multitude of little battles that you're working on. It's a hell of a scenario playing head-to-head -head or play by email. Yeah, that's true. Because it's just a massive tank battle. That's all that it is. It's a huge tank battle, which is a lot of fun. Oh, what? We lost the Huey. Where is it? Where is it coming from? We lost two Hueys, but I don't know where they're coming from. Oh, freaking really? Oh, we lost a gunship. Oh, they're coming from back here. Those are bigger guns, that's why. Oof. Market Garden scenario, Hell's Highway. That is such a interesting scenario if you like small battles everywhere because that's what you're doing. You're just battling here and there and everywhere trying to figure out where you want to shift your forces. Like 30th Corps, you have so much stuff but you don't know where to put it. I have so many small combat teams all over the map. Once uh, we finish uh, Objective Kharkov, um, Tim and I are going to be playing the 100 turn, a Battle of Encirclement, which is a 1941 East Front scenario that deals with the Battle of Ross level in, uh, I think it was August 41, as part of Guderian's push south to towards Kiev to trap the Russians there. This is basically the first engagement. But it's a massive scenario. It's a huge scenario. And uh, as John allowed me to be the Germans, I'm very excited about that. So with that, I'll have uh, a whack load of infantry as well as... I think it's the 3rd and 4th Panzer Divisions or elements of them. I don't remember, but at least one of them. 27 airstrikes remaining. We have 1 out of 4 units that have recovered morale. Uh, five headquarters unable to provide supply. We have four units low on ammo, and we have a whack load of helicopters that need to refuel. Let's see if a B-52 comes. No, oh, that's a Phantom. Oh, we got some damage, though. Another Phantom. No joy. Another phantom. Another phantom. Damn it, the phantoms came. Oh, that was a good hit, though. Reduced it by one. Tented strategic bomber airstrike centered on 4679. There it is. Oh, did you see that? That is epic. That is the first time I saw that. Oh, I love it. That is awesome. Holy crap.
Yeah, no kidding. That was... What'd you think, Stipe? Did it make you happy? It made me happy. That was cool. Big smile on my face. Yeah, yeah. No kidding. So there's one more coming. So that was cool. So, now that we know what they do, let's... Let's see. Let's see what happens. Uh, so there's a, a river there. They're going to be stuck in here. So let's call another B-52 right there. Let's call another one there. Oh, this is so exciting. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, no. Okay, so we need to get we need to get some helicopters up here to help with that. Uh, I need Okay, they're on the ground. Do I have any full strength helicopters? Oh, I don't. Gosh darn it. Gosh darn it. Ooh, all these guys need to land. Okay, I'm going to bring these over here. Holy crap. Just so we have eyes. I want to be able to see the, the bomber air strikes coming in. Oh, and there's another one right there. That's a good one. Oh, wait. Wait, 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 wait. They should still be able to see. So let's call in another B-52 there. <laughs> so exciting. Ah. <sighs> these guys back up towards this hill and get picked up because I think we're gonna have to send some troops back there so let's find some choppers like that one and those We lost a helicopter. Shit, we lost two. That's okay, we still have enough to land. Gosh darn it. I need to go take out those helicopters. helicopters they anti aircraft guns. Uh, that's not good. I need more support for that. Let's just land these back here. They're on the ground already. light on the AA batteries. Yeah, I need to be able to see them, though. That's I need to get my recon helicopters back out in the action. And the gunships.
Okay, that gives us a lot of eyes there. Hopefully, we don't lose too many helicopters. We're going to drop into there with that guy. I do have some troops that I can maneuver around with, which is good. Okay, that deals with that. That's okay. Uh, these guys are loaded. Those guys are loaded. We're going to bring these helicopters over here to help out these guys because there's a whack load of bad guys. choppers we need to land all these we need to land yeah you see this this is what I mean I shouldn't be able to do this I think that's kind of ridiculous that. No joy. Gosh darn it. Oh, that was a good hit. Also a good hit. Let's go into the woods. Oh, there's something there. Son of a bugger. Nice. These A-class Rangers, they're doing pretty good. They can they can take some of the abuse, which is kind of surprising. That was a good hit. They can see quite a lot. Let's take a look. Oh yeah, no, they can see that. There we go. Okay. That takes care of that. Uh, I think these helicopters need to come back.
Nice. That's so brutal. Oh, because there's a bunch of crossings. Come on, you buggers. So at this point, I'm not even going to bother moving these anymore because there's five turns left and there's literally nothing for them to do. I can see where having this armored column would be way more interesting if uh, we were playing like a weekend scenario about this campaign because then it would make more sense. But I think in this scenario, there's not a lot of really good purpose for this. So, I'm not going to waste my time moving all this other stuff. I don't have to build anything. I don't really need anything. The NVA forces here are totally not having a good day. So, yeah, we'll just keep that simple. Oh, got hit. Ah, wrong button. a good hit. We have to keep our helicopters way back here because we did spot some bad guys that I don't know where their guns are. Oh, there they are right there. RPGs. Since that's all done over here, let's fire across the way. Excellent. Now we did lose some helicopters, but I don't know why. Oh, that's why. Ha! <laughs> Those are probably 57 millimeter guns, that's my guess. Which would explain why we're having a bad day. Oh, 
Okay, I think that's that. Let's just do a double check, make sure that we're good everywhere. Oh, these guys, they were coming to help. Now you see him, B-52s come in. Now you don't. I hope so. That's what we're hoping. Okay. I don't think we spotted any guns back here, so we should be safe. so we can watch the B-52s again because that was cool let's see ah crap oh wow there's way more troops than I thought there They don't get assaulted. That would suck. aircraft gun that's hitting us. Hang in there, guys. Hang in there. Oh, oh freaking reductions and disruptions. This didn't help that I accidentally double timed them. That reduces their effectiveness as well. Ooh, we lost a full squad. Uh, yeah, I think you can. You can send as, as many as you have in one hex if you want. That might be overkill, though. <laughs> Go for it. Oh no! They went the wrong way. I was hoping they would come this way. So now these guys are out of range. I don't know what the math is for how the attacks are done on each hex for for the B-52s. I, I don't know that. So that might be something I have to ask Petri. But uh, if the if the airstrikes come in, this will be a good way to end on a bang because we are almost at two hours now. So I'm excited to see. I'm disappointed they all ran away. I'm really disappointed. But maybe we'll get lucky here. They won't all come. Nope, they're all going to come. Damn it. Yeah, I'm I'm curious. This is the first time using them, so I, I, I didn't even know that they were in this scenario, so it's kind of fun.
Let's see. Let's see the goodness. Oh, the final firing phase. We're getting close. Oh, man. They got butchered. Darn it! Saw that coming. Poor Arvin troops. Twenty-four airstrikes remaining. We have one unit that is isolated, a ranger platoon. We have six out of seven units that have recovered morale. Four headquarters unable to provide supply. Five units low on ammo. We have a bunch of helicopters that need to refuel. Here it goes. Phantom. Damn it. Uh, we have an attempted strategic bomber airstrike centered on Hex 4478. Here it comes. Oh, love that. That's amazing. That is amazing. Uh, we have another strategic attempted bomber strike on 6320. So cool. We have another one at 6015. It is totally awesome. Uh, look at this. So we have a lot of things that we can hit here. So let's see how that goes. Uh, another one at 5414. So cool. So cool. All right. And just like that, it is a thing of beauty. You're absolutely right. Man, I love that. But I will have to figure out how the math works and to see what the attacks are on the... I mean, based on what I could see... Uh, Whatever was in the center hex didn't live. Whatever was on the outside hexes, I don't know if they took damage or not. Let's let's do a quick review before we before we call it a day. Can't tell. So that didn't suffer any damage. Can't tell. Uh, this. Now I don't know if it took a hit or not. Uh, there was no hit, no hit. Yeah, so maybe it's not, whatever was in the center hex got eliminated for sure, 100%. Uh, but there were other stuff, the side effects, maybe not as strong. So I'm curious to see what the actual attack strength of those things are then. And that's something that, uh. We'll see what Petri has to say. Maybe he... I don't even know if he knows where it is in the code. So it might not be next session that I tell you, but in the future, I will definitely let you know. Because I'm curious too, because that is basically going to be how the tacti tactical nukes work as well. It'll be spread out over multiple hexes, etc. So I think uh, that's pretty cool. I, I'm excited. That was really neat. I have never seen that. So... <laughs> Never had the opportunity to be 52. So on that note, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Really appreciate it. Hope you have a fantastic week coming up. Again, I do this twice a week. I do it on Wednesday nights, uh, 6 p.m. Pacific, and Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Pacific. Unless something drastic happens in real, I am usually doing it all the time. So yeah, let me know if there's things that you want to see or whatever, or if you have any questions or comments, you can leave them down below if you're watching this on YouTube. Thanks to everyone for tuning in. Really appreciate it. Thanks for the chats. It's always good to uh, to have that bantering back and forth. That's that's fun. Makes it much more enjoyable. Thanks for Stipe. Thanks to John. Thanks to Nack. We really appreciate y'all showing up. 
Uh, if you do have any questions or comments, you're watching this on YouTube, you can watch, ask them down below. I do answer all the questions regardless of how old the video is. If you have more detailed questions or comments, you can join the Discord, which should be in the description below. And yeah, things are progressing. Slow and steady, but we're making progress. And on that note, take care, smile always, and talk to you soon.